Lord, no wait this. All right, I am Alan Lloyd Miller Waitkiss, and this is American Literature 1865 through present. And this video this evening is going to be on William Faulkner. And you notice from the title slide, it also is going to address literary prizes and not specifically just Faulkner, but some others uh, that you need to know when they're referenced and uh, the N word <coughs> in relationship to Faulkner and, and, and a little bit into the relationship and how I'll handle it. Uh, in the class. So first, uh, Faulkner was uh, born in 1897 and died in 1962. Uh, he writes pretty much exclusively in Mississippi. Uh, he created a, he, you know, a lot of stuff is set in Jefferson, which is where A Rose for Emily is set, uh, and he wrote mostly about um, Yagna Patafo County, uh, which is is a fictionalized county and very difficult to say. In fact, I'll probably put the pronunciation up on the screen. Uh, it's Chickasaw, for water runs slowly through flat land, which, again, you can see that that relates back to a lot of the themes that he's writing about with the Old South versus the New South and the transition uh, and all of that other sort of stuff. He lived in Oxford, Mississippi, and if you're ever in Oxford, uh, you go to the University of Mississippi, uh, it's worth touring his home, Rowan Oak, and you'll notice in if you Google photos of it, uh, it looks uh, very much like the Despain house that's mentioned in Barn Burning, and I'll bring that up uh, a little later as we move through. Now, Faulkner, you'll notice, is one of the three authors uh, by whom we read, sorry, four in this class, by whom we read uh, two, two, two works. Um, Robert Frost, again, who was super successful, uh, and we'll uh, bring him up a second when we come to prizes. All, in fact, all of these authors, except for Flannery O'Connor, uh, we read two works by her because she's just really, really popular with students. Um, we read two by Annie Dillard because I really like her, and uh, we read two by Faulkner because he is by most, if not all, to be considered uh, the greatest American author. I've mentioned in, you know, sometimes Hemingway sneaks in there, but I've mentioned in previous videos that, you know, I'm a big fan of lists, and I have several lists that list the greatest American authors and the greatest uh, authors of all time. And in both, um, you know, Faulkner's not going to be listed as the greatest of all times. So that's always going to be Shakespeare, but he is generally the first American listed. Uh, he'll sometimes make the top five, sometimes he makes the top ten worldwide, um, usually followed by Hemingway when it comes to Americans, and certainly in any list I've seen of Americans, he generally makes the number uh, one spot. And, and hopefully when you watch the videos on Rose for Emily and uh, barn burning, you'll understand why. Those are pretty difficult videos for me to do, especially barn burning, because I think it's such a great piece. Uh, he won two Pulitzer Prizes uh, and the Nobel Prize in 1949, and the Nobel Prize will say, now here, here's the Pulitzer Prize I'll explain in a second. Uh, the Nobel Prize we'll discuss first. That's the bigger deal of the two. Uh, that's given for sort of a lifetime of work. It's not it's not posthumous necessarily, but it's just for, you know, your work in general. Uh, and they always list why you specifically got it. You know, the Nobel Prize in peace is a big deal. In literature, uh, it's a big deal. They just give one. Um, sometimes they don't give any. But uh, he won it in 49 for his powerful and artistically unique contribution to the modern American novel. Now, the Pulitzer Prize in literature began uh, in 1901 is when they first gave it. And of that, we have arguably 10 or 11 Americans, and a lot of that has to do with birth, and I'll, I'll kind of explain that as I go through the list. I'm going to list uh, the Americans who have won it. Um, Sinclair Lewis won it in 1930 for novels, short stories, and drama. Eugene O'Neill won it in 1936 for drama. Uh, Pearl S. Buck won in 1938 for novels and biographies. T.S. Eliot, who is the one that makes it 10 or 11 here. While he was born in the United States, he's really considered British, okay? Um, because that's where he sort of lived and wrote, and he, he won for poetry in 1948. William Faulkner, he was 49, for novels, short stories, uh, screenplays. Ernest Hemingway, won in 54, for novels, short stories, and screenplays. Uh, John Steinbeck, one in 1962, first novel, short stories, and screenplays. Saul Bellow, who's considered American but was born in Canada, one in the year I was born, 1976, for novels and short stories. Um, Isaac Singer, 
who was born in Polish and, and wrote in Yiddish, is still considered American, but born in Polish, born in Poland. Uh, he won in 1978 for novels, short stories, memoirs. Uh, Joseph Brodsky, who was born in the uh, USSR, but considered American, won in 1987 for poetry. And then finally, the most recent, which has been more than 20 years ago, was Toni Morrison, who wrote Beloved and uh, Song of Solomon. We've mentioned her before. Uh, she won in 1993 for novels. Now, when we break down the most, this is, of course, not a complete list, but countries, uh, the country to win the most is France with 15. The United States has won 10. It's kind of like an Olympic count. Uh, England won 10. Uh, so we're tied with England. Germany has eight, and Sweden has eight. Now, the Pulitzer is a lot more common. It was originally a journalism uh, award, but we also give it in um, uh, six categories as far as uh, letters and drama. Fiction, drama, history, which is a book that's history, biography or autobiography, poetry, general nonfiction, and then kind of fitting in there, the Pulitzer Prize for music. Uh, and that's not a song. It's not like a Grammy. It's generally for... Um, uh, you know, they're going to give it to somebody who does classical music or something like that, or writes a play, or, who, you know, whatever. Um, now, who we read, who's won the Pulitzer? Uh, Edith Wharton won it for The Age of uh, Innocence. Fa uh, this is fiction. Faulkner won it for A Fable uh, and, and The Rivers. Um, Susan Glaspell for Drama won it for Allison's House. Tennessee Williams uh, won it for A Streetcar Named Desire, which we read, and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Uh, of all the authors we read, Robert Frost won the most, which was four for a variety of collections of po for four different collections of poetry. Uh, Annie Dillard uh, won for her book *Pilgrim at Tinker Creek*, um, and so you can see we read some authors who are, are, are relatively uh, successful when it comes to um, literary prizes. Okay, these being the two biggest for American writers now. Come back to Faulkner. Uh, the first thing is, you know, Faulkner's become widely, widely popular. I mean, he always has been. He was popular during his lifetime uh, and, and successful, mainly because he would write screenplays, which is really how you could make your money uh, at the time. He is now actually more criticized, not totally, uh, like if we totaled all the criticism out there, but if we look at criticism being written currently, more criticism is being written on Faulkner actually than Shakespeare, which is a huge thing. It means should you choose Faulkner, you should have no problem finding, um, finding uh, criticism on him. Finally, I want to address uh, the N-word, and I have a little bit, couple of stories here uh, that relate to that. Uh, it, this is a tough thing as an instructor to handle because I, you know, I I'm, will be heavily criticized by some English instructors if I don't use it. Uh, by other people, you know, you're criticized because you do use it. Um, you know, you could offend students. And somehow I've picked a middle road that um, generally makes everyone unhappy in some form, but it's, it, it works for me. And that is that... If I'm referring to it not directly, if I'm not quoting it, okay, I will say the N word, okay. If I'm reading it from the text or quoting the actual text, I will use the word. Now, the important thing, and this is why I bring this up with Faulkner, the important thing to consider is when an author uses that, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're not being racist. What you have to realize is that during Faulkner's time, during Flannery O'Connor's time, this was the acceptable term by both low and higher class, and in a lot of cases by African Americans themselves. You know, we could go back, as a lot of people want us to do, and censor the original works, but you don't really get an idea. It really kind of destroys um, the work. And, it's, and think about it in this term. Even if we move into current times and you use it, you know a lot about that author because it, or about, about who sang it. Because if someone says that word today, you know they're being offensive, right? Um, so it's a way of sort of seeing that. Now, back then, everyone would have sort of used it. Now, you will notice, though, when Faulkner uses it, I could be mistaken here, but I'm relatively sure. It's only in quotes. He, he actually never uses the term himself. He quotes other people as using it, whether it be the, the narrator or whether it be the, um, you know, the quote in the courtroom, as we see in, in barn burning. And Faulkner was considered, I, it was really interesting, I had a comp two class years and years and years ago, and I had an older woman from Mississippi 
who um, was sitting in class and some of the African-American students were a little upset with the, uh, the use of the N-word in barn burning. And she had grown up in Oxford, Mississippi. And, and like I said, she was in her 70s. And uh, I just sort of, she, I, I was going to handle, you know, that it was not racist. And she turned around to the class and just said, she sat right up front. She said, you know, young lady, uh, let me explain to the one woman who was kind of, you know, raising more hell than everybody else. And she said, you know, I, I grew up in Oxford, Mississippi, and I would check out Faulkner novels. And in the end sheets, you know, it's a hardbound book. That's that first piece that holds it to the book. She said people would, would scribble in uh, nigger lover, right, and would carve it into the side of the book. And she said she went to the librarian and she said, you know, this book has been defaced. Can you do something about it? You know, you need to order a new copy. And the librarian said, we can't keep them in um, that way. And she, because people just keep doing that. And she said, it's funny to her because in her lifetime, um, it went from people sort of praise or sort of um, criticizing Faulkner for writing about African Americans in a way that was positive, right? That he didn't attack them, that he was, um, you know, wanted, wanted equality there, that he was not a, you know, racist uh, when they wanted him to be racist to today when he's seen as racist simply because he, he uses that that word and so you know try not to be hypersensitive about that you're just gonna have to face it when, when we move through stuff you know I'll handle it in various ways but I do my best to kind of avoid being offensive but at the same time um, you know staying true to the original work and I think that that that's important Okay, so again, it would be a little different in class uh, where I could explain it better and you kind of know, you know, I'm not being racist in any way, but it, it, online it may read differently. So I just wanted to note that. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about Faulkner, give me a call or you can, um, there's a whole lot of information on him out there that you can look up. So I will see you all soon with the videos on Barn Burning and A Rose for Emily.